are used to extract the minerals and strategic resources of the object they orbit. Don't need to do anything about a mining station, do I? This is our construction ship, which is used to construct space stations. When an astronomical object such as a planet has been surveyed, we can order this ship to build a research station or a mining station to exploit any resources it may have. Big fan of this trinary system. So this is another mining station. Do I just... What's it... What does it do? What does anything do? This is a star. I don't know why it's often in population things. Um, let's check out Ish. God, Paradox games are so intimidating. Provides an overview of the planet's important statistics and allows us to set a designation if desired, as well as the option to automate the planet. It's just like I know that actually they're working really hard to make it understandable. So I do love trade, uh, although it's not part of my um going to be my main priority for how I make my technocracy. Here we see a breakdown of this planet's population, divided into layers or strata. Interesting. It also feels like it's just all changed since I last played. There's a leader's tab that says hire, dismiss, and assign idle governors, scientists, admirals, and generals. This is not much point recruiting in general. Um, we got no devastation, so that's good. We got, we can make decisions. Okay, the good news is none of these decisions we would make. Um... So, population is growing. There's no population decline, they're all me. I guess I'm just confused. Last time I played this, there was a lot of... You saw a map of the planet. And that seems hidden from me now? and sector screen provides an overview of all our colonized worlds, their pops, and their resource output. As our empire grows, it can be organized into sectors, which are helpful for administering. 
The situation log displays a list of... Okay, um, I'm feeling completely overwhelmed. Let's grab a science ship. These military fleets are used to protect our emerging empire from threats. This is our science ship, which is used to survey astronomical objects, such as planets, in a star system. A planet needs to be surveyed in order to make its resources visible. Everything in my system has been surveyed. Um, given where I am, I guess I'm most interested in that choke point. Science ship, you can go survey that system. That seems like a good thing to be doing. The technology screen is probably. The, so this game did something really interesting that I still don't really understand with tech trees. Well, the tech tree is effectively randomised. There isn't a clear tree. I'm going to go with that. It's time these guys understood some things like that. Unity. Now, I, which one's Unity. Unity makes traditions. The tradition screen traditions tradition are kind of civ cultures. Too much research. I want all of these things. I want some Zro. Empire Sprawl. Okay, so I can overexpand. It's just how many systems I own, how many colonies I own, the population. My number of star bases. Let's do some society research. Uh, get some unity coming in, why not? Yeah, let's get more minerals from jobs. No, oh, do I want powered exoskeletons? No, I like, my guys like showing off. Showing off their bots. Um, let's go to nano mechanics. I don't know. Uh, okay. So that's research done. In the contact screen, we see a detailed list. I don't know anyone, so I don't need to worry about that. No situations have happened. We can buy and sell resources. At first, this is merely an internal market. But if enough empires establish contact, I expect they might form some sort of galactic market. Cool. Market is completely uninteresting to me right now. It's just a button click place. Planets and sectors. We know all about this place. Do I want to build anything? I can't build anything. So that's useful. I 
think I'm just going to let the population do what it does. In the expansion planner, we find nearby habitable Don't need to worry about that. Covers government policies, which have wide-ranging effects on how our empire is run. So these are interesting because it does benefit me to make these decisions now. I'm worried that Yeah, that seems fine. Orbital bombardment can be indiscriminate. Resettlement and find it being allowed. Try and be peaceful. Try and be open. Fine. Fine. Turning half a credit into a um into an ideology piece seems really worthwhile. Uh, I should wait though. That's the thing I want to do when I've got some economy going. We put it workers fine, refugees. Can't change that for some reason. Population controls. Be prohibited, purge, prohibited. Okay, I feel fine with all of these. Here, edicts. Okay. Uh, this I basically want, don't I? Yeah, that edict. Um, I don't think I have the materials to do any of these other things. Quite nice Endless Legend inspired edicts from having luxury materials. Okay, relics and traditions. Fine. Go away. Technology I was just looking at. There are no factions. There are no claims. There's one species. I am leader. Oh, he's going to live longer. He's going to gain more experience. Gain more experience, gain more experience. I'm good at researching propulsion. Um. Okay, go over that. Oh, I got this back. I think I need a mining station to get these resources out. So actually, I think if they are green, I'm already getting them. Yes. So I'm already getting all of these. What I'm not getting is these. Let's build that. Okay. 
Um, cool. I think that is now everything I can do for the moment. Oh, I've got. They're all going on. Let's unpause and just see what happens. Basically, the interesting things are the science ship and we have a f okay. We have an air, but there's nothing to know about them. He got that quick. Well, Laius is it's okay, habitable. I think that's pretty big. Oh, construction's complete though, so. I can set you multiple tasks, can't I? So you can build a mining station. Is that all you can do for now? alone for now. Interesting. Um, One of our science ships has just surveyed a world that will make an excellent candidate for our first colony. It is of the same planet class as our home world, so our colonists should be quite comfortable. God, imagine if... <laughs> this really is pretty unlikely to happen, but imagine if, like, the second planet we look at has life on it. Um, oh, so they're alive and just not sapient. Fascinating. I'm into that. So yeah, this is a great place to live. I will make a colony here. Oh, it would, wouldn't it? It would make you, uh... Yeah, we go to... Okay, Wallace has been fully... Whatevered. It's time. Not quite sure why your moon is so good. By the way... This is definitely not stable. Um, oh well though. Okay, so I think I just have to click more times on the thing. You go and survey that system. Yeah, I really like this place. So I need to expand my borders to here. This is going to be um, potentially a controversial statement. So I, I don't actively work on um, exobiology, finding life on other planets, but I do kind of 
I do a lot of work around it. I do some of the physics of these systems. And it really isn't that surprising that we should expect to find very primitive life on planets relatively easily. Um, well, actually, that's really hard to say. It depends on the rate of abiogenesis, which is not really an unknown. But there's certainly no reason why we shouldn't expect that. And we don't exactly know what the conditions needed for life are. In fact, it's something I should go away and research, like what the current ideas are of what conditions are needed for life. But basically, there's not any really strong scientific reason against life propagating throughout everything. What have we found? Interesting. This place is crap, but it has an asteroid belt, so that's good. Oh, uh, okay. That's why that wasn't working. Um, you can build... That. So we've already found the alien civilization. That probably is stretching it. Oh, great. Situation log updated. Um, so the reason I can't build any of these is that I don't have enough. What are these called? Minerals. So I think a lot about life and consciousness in the abstract. Um, more and more of my work recently has been like my, my side work. My uh, kind of day job is pretty standard. How does gravity work? Um, System survey complete. Has been thinking about construction complete how we should expect to see um, analogues to our own consciousness and our own species in others, how where we can draw analogies between human intelligence and um, the intelligence of other animals. Yeah, you can move here. We'll have the we'll have the money soon. Um, the intelligence of intelligent systems that we're creating, uh, and the intelligence intelligence in the abstract. What are the rules that define it? Woo! What have we got? A little neutron star would be much smaller, but you know we can have a tradition. So, we like making stuff. That's our big thing. I'm always a bit worried about this science as religion. Um, oh, 
I like the idea of going for some harmony. Let's have it. Um. Oh, I really hope I can build a colony on Flunk B3. Oh, it's going to level, okay. Do we need to do anything about that? My Garvin is also going to level. That's good. I'm cautious to say too much and make too bold a prediction about um, anything about alien life. I've kind of, I kind of, I went off that idea a bit there because I just don't want to say. I don't want to offend people in my community. I'm just really scared of offending people. On all scales, I'm terrified of offending people. Um, this is something I've been trying to sort of work out recently because I think this fear of offence is in its own way... Yeah, not an outpost. Um, it's... A manifestation of um well, I may as well be on record saying this. Um I'm exploring at the moment whether I might have autism or Asperger syndrome or ADHD, something neurotypical, which frankly for people who know me may not be too surprising to hear that that's a thing worth exploring. Um construction. So I want some more mining capacity. And one way that that manifests itself is not really understanding necessarily other people's reactions and motivations. And basically it's very easy to offend without meaning to. It's very easy to um, to, without intention, do something that is quite challenging to people. <laughs> uh, so this is a nice reference to comets uh, in um, Europa Universalis certainly, and probably Crusader Kings as well, often changing your nation's stability, because everyone worries about what the comment is. The planet has unemployed pops. I have an unemployed worker. Can I put them to work on something? Good, you produce a lot of, uh, a lot of science. That makes sense. You're kind of my ruling class. Um, oh cool, I now have enough to do this. So it seems like they've moved away from the explicit things produce wealth. Which is interesting. Um, for anyone who's never played Paradox games, they change a lot over time. The, de the devs 
often are just kind of inventing the game as they go, and that's because it's such a complex system. But they've got there's a whole economic system. Like Sacramento like Opal Universalis is not a bad simulation of worldwide economics in a five hundred year period. Um and that means that there's a lot of complexity, a lot of capacity for chaos, and they don't always know what they're going to get out when they do what they do. So, uh, So they edit it, they build it as they go. Oh, I don't go for a commercial zone. These guys turn minerals into alloys. Alloys? I can use to construct, construct ships and star bases. So, I think alloys and consumer goods are both new to me. I want to get this person into employment. I'm reducing some consumer goods. Turn it into society research. I can build them more, more alloy foundries. Basically, I don't really want to build anything that we already have. We have research labs, we have alloy foundries. These are all silos. Absolutely unnecessary right now, we've got loads of space. Um, am I likely to have at all a crime problem? Is this crime? Not for a long time. Okay, so these are all keeping my population happy. And that's leading to stability. My stability is coming from my approval rating and my empire capital, capital, which increases how many, much I get from jobs. I really like this new system where I have less direct control of like, I decide how much apples are made. Instead, I have some influence on the creation of jobs. And those jobs decide how many apples are made. Okay, I feel like I'm starting to get my head around this. What does this mean? No, I don't care. Oh, I can just build. I can build just basic districts as well, and make more power, more trade value. So, what are these? What are these things doing? They are limiting the number of districts I can have. So I can have up to 16 districts. I have nine. I can have four more, put me to 13, and then three more low block. Okay. So no need to clear these anytime soon, but I could eventually clear them. They're specifically blocking generator and mining districts. So 
So. So these, um, cool. These planetary features are just changing the maximum number of districts that I can have in a thing. Um, so I still don't really know what I should build, but I'm going to build a commercial zone. Why not? I need more population to, to build these things, which means that future population, if I need a place to put it, will have to go into districts. Um, this means that they've completely got rid of the adjacency game. Not against that. Adjacency games can be pretty boring. But they can lead to interesting decisions. Honestly, this right now is fascinating to me, just as a game designed in its own reflection. Which is something you rarely get. Someone makes a game, they put it out there, and they can change it a bit, but not very much. But this, this is something we're seeing more and more, but this is really heavy. This is kind of a lot of the base game has been changed. Not necessarily the base ideas. We're still living the same kind of life. Um... Yeah, I'm not calling this white crush. <laughs> that sounds terrible. It's just gonna be called crush. My leader's gaining levels, which is not a thing I can do anything about, but that's cool. Some construction was complete. Hey. Honestly, so I'm assuming it will immediately put someone in that uh, that place when I can. System survey complete. Hmm. This is pretty good. So now I haven't met anyone yet, but. The priority is always kind of uh, Can I build how do I colonize this? Do I just click colonize? I can build a desert sh a colony ship on Kithri, I get oh made out of Kithri. Costs stuff that I have going spare. Oh, I'm really pushing this kind of clockwork systems analogy. Um. I don't know, I was going to name it after Lorenz, but I don't, I don't have like a fun name for that. It's Sunday afternoon and I'm tired. Uh, this is a ludicrous name for a planet, but I love it. It's also a ludicrous name for a town, I love it. Right, they're on their way.
it has a crazy amount of space for cities and not very much for other things. It's got a deep sinkhole, which would give me another gas extraction. Well, I don't know what that means. And takes away one of the number of districts. It's got a lot of Syrian desert. Some nutritious mud lands. I don't. I guess I don't really understand why it's got so much space for city districts. Oh well. I kind of re no, I don't regret spending that, but it is actually limiting my expansion speed. Well, it isn't. It isn't. Um. Do I agree? That I want to focus on habitable worlds. Yeah, I think I do. Oh, so there's actually stuff going on in the situation log now. So I just have to find relics from the Erasians. And I have to survey a bunch of habitable worlds. All this while I'm actually on my way to. Uh, Ooh, busy system. Okay, given that we're finding cool stuff here, this is actually where I'm going to build the next star base, as long as I'm allowed to. Why would I not be allowed to, I say? Costs a lot more apparently. But I feel like if I do build a starbase here, I can kind of justify. Oh, you built your building, which means that people are no longer without jobs. Uh, I kind of tempted to keep building stuff then. I'm gonna build that. Build another mining district. We can have more mining jobs. I want to keep the materials high. Let's keep looking at these systems. So we got the red giant. Uh, we've got a nice sort of earth analogue, sorry, solar system analogue. Double asteroid belt system. I wonder if that's stable. There are some really basic questions about stability and habitability and things like that in solar systems that are half. People are working hard on them and like really doing really good work, but they're not very fully understood. I like this one for some reason. Okay, so I can actually do it. Sounds like an incredible amount of biz. Cool. Everything's going well. Do I build a star base here? How do I do that? 
turn it a little. So, how do I know what the kind of cultural cost is? The Ishtari Starbase was building something. Oh, it was building my colony ship. That's cool. Okay, so here's where we do trade routes. I feel like I get it. Um, one thing I'm wondering is, is this a star base? How, uh... Okay. Outposts do not count. So star bases are outposts, but then we upgrade them to be the next thing. That was nice and clear. Ishtari. How, uh... I guess I can just replace don't get a discount for having built something. <sighs> Luxury residences don't really seem like our thing. I'm I'm tempted to build that. Um, what else would I think about? Don't care about entertainers. Actually, I think I might leave it. Where can I see my approval rating and... Policies. Planets and sectors. Oh, I'm gonna take a quick break here. Maybe make a cup of tea. Um, give myself some energy back. So I will be back 